Hello, I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. Hi. And this is the Silver Lottings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's bleakest endings. You struggled uh, for, you struggled on that, that one a little bit, huh? <laughs> that uh that other voice that you're hearing is Mally Moore. Hey. Um, and thank you for joining us on what is sure to be an interesting episode. I fucking hate you for making me watch this movie again, <laughs> dude. Oh my god. I've been complaining about this movie to like anyone that will listen to me for a week. Yeah, it's uh... No one cares. No <laughs> one cared that I had to watch it. They were like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's all right. Well, um, if you're new to the show, thank you for uh, for A, for finding us and giving us uh, a chance. Um, what we like to do is watch movies. I apologize for the podcast thus far. <laughs> we like to listen to movies that uh, in, in we, fucked we, up ways. Hey, hold up. First off, you say we like to. You like to. <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. You, you also can said opt out at any time. You also said listen to movies. Did I say listen to movies? Fuck. You did. Should we? <sighs> this is this is un this is unacceptable. We what do we do here? I mean, I. <laughs> I mean, if you, I mean, I usually leave the TV on. I don't know yep. what system you got where yep. you're just getting audio, but yep. like, you know, what we like it, to do, it's a, it's a visual medium, man. What we like to do is watch movies. There you go. That with end, sound, that would sound that end in fucked up ways, weird ways or depressing ways. Uh, and we like to try to find the good in those things that seem uh, helpless and what a movie <laughs> we're doing this week. Now, this was... It's, it, it's not even a downer. Like, the whole fucking movie is fucked up and depressing. Yeah. This, like, it's just... It hits you, like, right off the bat. You're just like, oh. Yeah, this is a grimy movie. Yeah, like, I... Okay, I have... Okay, I started watching this movie at work and mm-hmm. kind of watched this movie in bits periodically throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And I finished it like an hour ago and just immediately took a shower <laughs> it's funny you mentioned watching it at work because i too watched it at work um we're so good at our jobs <laughs> we are great employees hire us i realized in because the f- if our bosses listen to this we're so getting fired <laughs> I, I realized in the first 30 seconds of watching this movie at work that this was a poor decision um <laughs> yeah not it just it it brought down my whole day man like i just meant it from a uh appropriate standpoint like it was definitely oh, not well i mean <laughs> yeah that too um for sure but it also just just a downer day i had today now, well Mally, we haven't even uh, announced what the movie is going to be so we're talking oh, of course about 1999 uh, 1995's film wow. kids uh directed by larry clark i could have sworn gun to my head all the money in the world on the table that this movie was directed by harmony uh Kareen. And no, I, I he wrong. wrote it. Yes, um, I when he was he wrote it when he was eighteen. Mm-hmm. Shot they shot it when he was nineteen. Like there's BTS photos of this movie, and like I have a hard time believing he was even eighteen or nineteen. He looks like thirteen in the photos from this film. Yeah, um, he, I mean he he is in the movie at one point. Yeah, in the um, uh, in the club scene. Yeah, he gives uh Jenny. Yeah, give her, give her some drugs. Yeah. Um, and he looks like the kid that would sell drugs too. <laughs> um, God. so Mally, we've talked about our rewatches. What about the first time you saw Kids? What was what did you think? Um, I saw this so back in it was like oh seven oh eight. I was in a really shitty like post hardcore band. Mm-hmm. Um, as we all were. Mm-hmm. And one night, this was the second quote harmony corinne film i saw end quote the first was gummo i have not seen gummo yet don't yeah. just don't even fucking bother or honestly. um trash humpers i haven't seen that either um so i saw gummo like our other guitar player showed it put it on he's like we're gonna watch this i was like okay mm-hmm. and like 20 minutes in i was like what the fuck is this like i should have <laughs> known this movie's gonna be fucked up because the dude that showed it to me had like low-key tried to kill himself like two weeks ago oh fun um yeah it was really weird he like didn't show up to band practice one night we were like oh that's weird he's not answering his phone he called me the next afternoon he's like hey man sorry uh i you know i was feeling real down yesterday just od'd on some pills but like i'm good you guys want to jam tonight and i was like 
Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's the guy that showed me Gummo. So I should have really known what I was getting into. And then, like, after watching it, I was like, that was fucking weird. Mm-hmm. And then I felt the need to, like, a little, like, a few weeks later, like, what else has that fucking dude made? Mm-hmm. And that led me to this, which the reason I watched this movie, because I was like, that dude made a weird, fucked up movie that I did not like. Oh, shit, Rosario Dawson's in this? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, her first movie, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, I believe so. And, yes. also, and also the dude, uh, the kid that plays Casper was in Next Friday. So I was like, yep. oh. Yep. Maybe it's a funny movie. Nope. I think it's also Chloe nope. Savini's first movie too. Who is is in that a, how you pronounce her last name? I believe so. Son of a bitch. I th- she's from uh, American Psycho. She's the uh, is it secretary or assistant? She's the prostitute. No, no, no. She's she's the good girl. She's the one that he like puts the nail gun to the back of her head. I'm like ninety five percent sure that's who she is. <laughs> I don't think she's the prostitute. Are you? I, I, ah! I'm pretty sure she's the assistant. Uh, all right. Well, you keep talking. Let's. Uh, well, future episode, right, we'll figure hang it on. out then. Hold up. <laughs> if you're wrong, mm-hmm. you have to drink a glass of milk. Oh, no. I, I, oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <sighs> all right. Well, That's while, the bet. While Matt That's is looking bet. that up, let me give some backstory about when I first saw kids. Uh, I believe it was around the same time, around 2006, 2007. I would have, would have put me around 16, 17. Uh, when I was going through trying to watch every f- film I could get my hands on, uh, you didn't succeed. You did not. You. I I, 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 I skipped a lot of the big ones. Um, but I watched Kids. So probably like ten years after it debuted, a little after ten years. Um, I remember liking the movie at the time, and thinking, "Oh, this is totally different from anything I've seen up to this point." Like Harmony Korine for all his weird, you know nuances and it just ah it, fuck you were right oh secretary. i should have made a fucking bet on my end damn I it no damn it i'll drink a glass of milk <laughs> um i i for all his weird nuances and like how off-putting his movies can be there is something to him and there's something that draws people in and he's got a very specific style that you know you either really like or you really do not like but I remember well, at the time liking see, kids. That's the th- like. I don't hate this movie. It's fucking depressing. I like this movie. I don't like Gummo. I haven't seen Trash Humpers, and I fucking love Spring Breakers. Spring Breakers. Yeah, I love Spring Breakers too. Um, I'm a dark tan and oil. <laughs> literally, literally in my living room, there is a sign that says Scarface on repeat, constant, y'all. <laughs> Literally, it's like one of those little like boards where you can like rearrange the letters and shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it has a quote from Spring Breakers on it. Well, we should mention the reason too we're doing this episode is because Harmony Korine has a new movie out this week. Uh, is it Bomb. Spring Breakers Two? Yeah, Fuck, it should be Spring Breakers Two. Um, I mean, I feel like honestly, like Spring Breakers, Beach Bum. There's a connection there. Yeah, cameo, Franco cameo. Yeah, I would. I a I, I shared universe with this and kids. Like that oh is, god is, damn it! Yeah, all right. The kids from Kids go on spring break and hang out with Matthew McConaughey and James Franco. Yeah, and Zac Efron. Yeah, and bring back Ashley Benson because I love her. The Harmony Verse. Yeah, I'm into it. Um, that sounds so like innocent and cute. Harmony Verse, <laughs> and it's fucking not. Yeah, everyone's doing drugs and fucking and AIDS and coke mm-hmm. and fucking fucking. Yeah. On a completely different note, for our usual listeners, if anyone's keeping up with my diet, uh, this episode I will be having a turkey sandwich mm. with uh, provolone, avocado, a little bit of tomato, and some spicy mustard. That sounds good. It, it It's pretty good. I was going to eat this earlier, and then I forgot, and then I made the sandwich and realized it was about time to record this episode, so I was like, you know what? I always eat on this podcast. Let's keep that train rolling, you know? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of provolone, but I mean, I would probably go with pepper jack or something. How but that sounds not, good. Oh, I love me some pepper jack. How could you not like provolone? It's like the least offensive cheese. I don't know, man. It's the least flavorful, probably, for me. It's substance. I mean, it's not something I would normally would pick on a sandwich, is all I'm saying. I'm not dissing provolone. I'm just saying that it's not my first choice. Well, not my first choice either, but it's there. 
Yeah. And plus, you know, I'm with the, I got the turkey, I got the cheese, I got avocado, I got spicy mustard, I got tomato. Like I can't, you know, I gotta have that. You know, I gotta have a a, a control in there. You know, I can't get too crazy with my cheeses. Yeah, yeah I, I would love I would love some smoked gouda right now, <laughs> but it would not pair. Well, you know who really likes turkey sandwiches, Molly? Who? Kids. Let's get back to kids, motherfucker, and talk about. Uh, the making of kids. It was course directed. I was really mentioned. hoping I could just distract from the movie for like an hour, and we could just talk about <laughs> cheeses and sandwiches. Nope, and not fucking AIDS. Nope, we're talking about AIDS. Um, one letter off from the word kids, actually. AIDS. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> never. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to lie, never put that together. Directed, of course, as we mentioned, by Larry Clark, starring Leo Fitzpatrick, Justin Pierce, Chloe, I want to say it's Savini is how you pronounce it, Rosario Dawson, John Abrahams, and John Abram. Ham. <laughs> I think there's two <laughs> people named John Abraham in this movie. Um, okay. Had a budget of $1.5 million, which is, to me, it sounds crazy. Not that this movie had a budget of one point five million. That a movie like this, could where get. Is, where's the money on the screen? Yeah, not only that, where did the money come from? Who's investing in this screenplay? <laughs> um, grossed seven point five million dollars worldwide, so it is a hit, uh, but only sits at a forty six percent on Rotten Tomatoes. I mean, yeah, you think so? It makes sense. I get it. Yeah. It's not for I everyone. Get it. No. Um, and it was not at all in the slightest. It was nominated for the Palme d'Or at Cannes, which is crazy to really? me. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I was um, not aware. Yeah, I didn't know about that until today. Um so I we I'm not I don't want to play the trailer because it's literally just a song Thank with God. visuals of the movie. So is I, there anything I do, you want to talk about? I I do. Um, first off, did I'm assuming you watched the same trailer that starts out with that really upbeat Vidmark logo. Yep. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Speaking of people who finance the goddamn movie, it is like such an upbeat, happy, like fucking video game music flying in purple letters. And then it cuts to the just the most depressing fucking shit ever. Yep. Um, this trailer is so film school. Yeah. Like, the amount of, like, every, like, you know, we both went to film school. Every fucking student film trailer is just clips with music. Yep. They they never drop any dialogue. One, because film kids can't edit audio worth of shit. Yep. Shout out recording art students, because they saved my ass many times. And can't write um, good dialogue. <laughs> that, as well, yeah. All, dude, I did, I directed two student films when I was in school, both trailers, music and images, yep. no dialogue. The back half of my thesis film was it. like that, but the first half was uh, dialogue. It was a teaser trailer, so, you know. Um, yeah. That, but, I, I don't have anything else to say about the trailer unless you got more. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just images of kids running around a city Yep. set to first a slow downer song and then like a fucking punk song. Yep. It's not terribly exciting. No. Um, shall we get into the movie? Uh, I mean, the, yeah. the longer you postpone it, man. I know. <laughs> let's just fucking do this. Um, I wouldn't say off the bat, I hated this movie on the rewatch. <laughs> I remember like enjoying this movie the first time I saw it. This time, it was a chore. Well, it's it's one of those movies where there's not like your protect. Who would you say the protagonist is? Like Jenny. Jenny. Okay, but who we is spend the movie a lot of time. Want me to believe it is <laughs> fucking Telly. Yep. And he is a piece of shit. Yeah, I think everyone like in this the, movie is unlikable. Uh, in- like including Jenny, I think she's also I, unlikable. Yeah, I feel all right. Any person. Who is just like, I'm only fucking virgins. When he himself is like, what, like 15? Is like a piece of shit. How old would you say Telly is? He can't be older than 16, like, right? Yeah, I'd say 15, 16. Yeah. I don't, they, I don't, do they ever say how old he is? I don't know. I think they're all within like maybe like 12 to 17 
Well, I think, yeah, like the girl in the first scene I, is 12. She's like 12. Like, ah, oh, God. It's gross. gross. Yeah, it's gross. Like, even if he's 15, I don't care. Fuck that. Yeah. I, um, I watched this movie with headphones on because I was at work and it was a bad decision. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> I played it. I got two. I, I got like a fucking, like, my desk is like in a kind of like the entrance to our warehouse. Mm hmm. And I got like a nice little like two monitor setup, and I was just fucking blasting that shit. <laughs> um, it was not a good choice because this movie starts off in possibly the grossest way to open a movie, which is a close up of teenagers making out with the grossest yep. fucking sound. I, I, I realized about this about myself that I hate the sound of kissing, <laughs> like the sound of people kissing, is nauseating. It, yeah, it's gross. Um, it's yeah, I agree. I want to know is disgusting. Did you notice? Because I noticed this while watching the opening credits. Who the probably not? Who an executive producer of this movie was? Who it will make a lot of sense when I tell you, but um, oh, Gus Van Sant. Yep, that does not 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 feel like it. This this should be executive produced by Gus Van Sant. <laughs> it just feels like it. Him and Harmony Korine are so. Such a good pairing, like they are match each other good? so well. I don't know if "good" is the word. Let me rephrase that. Interesting. Yeah, they pair well together. <laughs> They're like cheese and wine; like they go together perfectly. Um, oh, and we're back to cheese. <laughs> anyway, the um, reason smoked Gouda fucking slaps so hard. I have is that. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Continue about your no, smoked just, Gouda. I'm just saying, you know, don't <laughs> sleep on the Gouda. Like, that shit goes hard, man. I have... Mm. Or like, oh, man, get some Triscuits with a little brie. Mm-hmm. Woo! Now we talking. I'm looking at my notes here. I realize I have nothing positive to say about this movie until, like, almost the last shot. So... <laughs> I mean, because that's the last shot. Well, I mean, I, to be honest, there's not a lot of, like, positive things in the movie. Oh, wait, there's one positive thing. Mm-hmm. Ginny has HIV. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, that's it, guys. Close up. Woo! We're done here. Nailed it. <laughs> uh, just, just no aversion to the low hanging fruit. Just, just oh, grab God, it. Oh, right God, none. I'm going for it on this one, man. Let's, let's, I mean, let's just do it then. Let's just break apart this movie and why I mean, we don't the like whole, it. Like, the whole movie is just following these shithead kids around, mm-hmm. watching them be horrible fucking people. Yeah. Um, like, yeah, like it's telling Casper fucking off the whole movie, like doing, like beating up fucking random people in the fucking park, hitting them, like knocking them unconscious. Like, oh, did we kill him? I don't know. Yeah. And then like Ruby and Jenny are just like, oh shit. Like Jenny's like, oh, I'm HIV positive. I should go find him and tell him. Mm-hmm. And so her whole thing is just one, like kind of following him. Like, oh, where the fuck is he? Where the fuck is he? He's not here. Shit, is he there? Nope. Oh, you're going to give me drugs? Oh, this feels weird. That's where why is he? That's why I'm I said cell there. phones would be really handy in a situation. Cell like phones would have, oh, this movie would have been fucking six oh, minutes shit. long. shit. I got AIDS. Yo. Uh, beep, boop, 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 yeah. Boop. <laughs> AIDS. Yeah. Click. I have a feeling what's going to happen this episode. And I feel like they would, like, if just give one kid a phone and there would have been so much less rape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, um, I feel like what's going to happen in this, this episode, movie, in this movie, not yeah. necessarily in real life. I feel like what's going to happen in this episode is I'm going to rattle off things that I don't like and it, you're just going to agree with me. So I want to try not to do that because that would be boring. So I'm also going to yell a lot. <laughs> Let's let's get the obvious things out of the way. The dialogue in this movie is absurd. <laughs> it's insane. It's laughable. Yeah. Well, yeah. Telly and Casper's like conversations are so. I I feel like the reason I enjoy this movie at the time is because I was that age when I saw it, and now right. almost twice as old as these kids are. I realize well, how ridiculous they sound and how and it's funny because like. Is. It's shot almost docu style, and it feels mm-hmm. almost like improv, but mm-hmm. it's not like all. It's all scripted, which just write better harmony. Like fuck. I think that's the point, though, because like a lot of people do say this movie feels like it is almost documentary like, but 
that they're really, really close to the script, like the well, dialogue see, and everything. My thing is, was it intentional or is that just what they say? Well, from what I understand now about the making of the movie is that all of these people are friends of Harmony Kareen and that he asked them to play versions of themselves. And a lot of the things that happen in the movie are things that he witnessed firsthand. At least this is what he says, um, which is why uh, a lot of these kids like they're they, they seem like they're just shitheads. Well, I was going to say they just seem like they're just rolling off the cuff and they're just having real conversations. And I feel like maybe he just penned some of the conversations he heard. Which, I mean, write what you know, I guess. Yeah. But <clears throat> maybe not verbatim. It doesn't, like I said, it doesn't make the dialogue any more ridiculous. Like it, it's a, like I said, it's a chore to get through like the first 20 minutes of this movie because it's just so gross and grimy. And like I wrote down, like w- we're 15 minutes into the movie and there is, there's zero plot. There's not even a thread of a plot. None. We don't start getting an idea of what this movie's going to be about until Jenny's diagnosis. Yep. Like, and that's that I would say that's the a plot, right? Yeah. Or it should a- be <laughs> AIDS. A. How? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the AIDS plot as it ha- shall <laughs> henceforth be known. And the B plot is just, is Telly going to hook up with uh, Darcy? And that's like the only plots I can think of. Yeah. The B plot is, is he going to fuck a 13 year old? Yes. Yeah, it's the A plot is AIDS. <laughs> the B plot is statutory rape. There's there's not not a whole lot of there there, man. This movie, I think this movie. What is, the fuck? This movie's got a reputation, I think, for being like deep and it's fake deep for sure. Like there's not yeah. there's nothing to latch onto here, really. I mean, what? I don't even know what the purpose of this movie is like i don't know what harmony and uh, larry clark are trying to say because hey sometimes 15 year olds get aids shit is is the point that's life is the point to be as absurd as possible i almost feel like it has to be right like i mean i know why, he says this, else? i know he says this is based on his real life but th- no i really don't think people can be this like absurd like in even teenagers in New York in the nineties, I don't I feel like you could not live this lifestyle and enjoy it. But maybe that's me. Maybe I'm just naive, but I could not imagine like Casper I don't think he drinks anything but malt liquor this entire movie. <laughs> oh and he's like God, what fifteen? Makes my stomach churn. Yeah. And gross. Yeah, it's I I, I can't, man. It's just I wish we we had a perspective of someone who had never seen this movie before that was this age that could tell us what they think about it. But like I said, when I'm almost twice as old as these kids and I'm looking at this, it's so cringy. And it's yeah, I want something to latch on to. And Jenny is the closest uh, thing you well, get. You know what? Fuck it, man. We should have man. We should have found like a 15 year old kid and made him watch this movie. Then talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't have been fucking weird at all. I should have got my niece hey, to watch this movie. Be hey, like, man, hey, hey, yeah. how you doing, buddy? You wanna you wanna watch a movie? Hmm. Yeah. No, we're not gonna. It's not Frozen. Yeah. <laughs> I should have got my. It's kind of like Frozen. <laughs> I should have got my sixteen year old niece to watch this because she's one of those people that wasn't allowed to watch like even the Harry Potter films growing up. So for her oh, to sit down God. and watch something like this, that would be. Ooh. That would be something interesting. That to, would be amazing. Yeah. Oh my god! We, ah, oh, we should have done like a live episode of just <laughs> her reactions. I feel like Holy forcing, shit! That would have been amazing. I feel like forcing any minor to watch this episode would result in jail time. <laughs> like it, it, it can't not end well. I mean, it's got that's it's got in bad. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Although, like, honestly, dude, if I go to jail, like, you know, I could use some regulation in my life. <laughs> you could use some, and, dude, some like, if I don't, schedules. If I don't fucking come out of prison just fucking yoked. Yeah. When like, you what's the fucking point? Yeah. Um, Was this the first movie you ever saw Rosario Dawson in? No? From what I'm gathering? No, I don't think so. I, th- I think it was for me. I, I want to say, honestly, the first thing I saw her in, I want to say Sin City. Hmm. When did Clerks 2 come out? Uh, 
Because I think that might actually be the first thing I actually saw her in, and I didn't know who she was at the time. Uh, I will find out. Uh, 2006, so... God damn it. It would have been, ra- been around the time I saw kids, so maybe I saw them right like then, but... uh, Wait, when did Sin City come out? 2004, I want to say. Or 2005? 2005, okay, yeah. so yeah, it was definitely... No, shit! Wait. Nope, I just realized something. Hmm. I saw her in something before that. Hmm. Men in Black 2. Oh, shit. You're right. Men in Black 2. And she was also in 25th Hour before this, but 25th Hour, I think I saw uh, later, because that was just a random buy. The way I saw 25th Hour, actually, I literally just was at Goodwill, and I was like, Edward Norton, Spike Lee, Zaria Dawson, Phyllis Seymour Hoffman, and a pack. This... Yeah. This Barry Pepper, this movie has everyone. <laughs> um, um, oh, she was also in fucking Rent. Yeah, I didn't see Rent. And uh, Guide to Recognizing Your Saints. Hmm. All right, well, I think... And Death Proof. I think it was either this or Clerks 2 that I saw her in first, but I... I, I love Clerks 2. Yeah, Clerks 2 is great. I um, I wonder if, like, what this is like for her, like, to know that this is the first movie that she like started to get a name for like because this movie was well received like with critics um for the, i mean i believe roger ebert gave it f- uh three and a half stars out of four um really if i recall correctly i mean you, you can double check my holy on shit website, but, no i don't want to um it, it i would like to like have i'm sure there's an interview out there it's like so you were in kids what was that like <laughs> um because it made me start thinking while we were watching i was like just the logistics, like how do you make a movie like this? Like, you have all these underage children doing all this perverse and dangerous and violent stuff, and it, I have like a ninety percent sure feeling that this was shot guerrilla style, no permits, just a, a a camera and like a little sound mixer, and that was it. Because maybe that's where the budget went, <laughs> just to the equipment. <laughs> Um, well, well, yeah, that too. What, like, I don't know who. I mean, you cast these kids; they're not actors for the most part. They're mostly just kids no. off the street. What do the parents think of this movie? Like the parents oh, of these kids? Oh God, that would be a great documentary thing. To just, <laughs> just fucking put a camera on the parents of these kids back in '95 yeah. and just let them watch it. Because, hey, daddy, look at me. I can't. Fathom. Oh no, I'm the one with AIDS. Yeah. I can't fathom there's anything as a writer, director, like Harmony and Larry telling the parents of these kids, hey, here's what the movie's about. Will you sign off on on the permit to let them film? Oh, God. Like, surely he didn't let them read the script. I don't. (sighs) But I mean, but then then the movie comes out. They would be on set. (laughs) Oh, man. They were probably pissed. No, there's no, no, no way. That Harmony and Larry went to like the the film board and got permits. Like <laughs> they got insurance and no, even in the nineties, there's no fucking way. Well, dude, I don't know. Carrie Woods was the producer. I don't. I don't who's Carrie Woods? I don't know who that is. I mean, he's his name's attached. He produced like Scream, Godzilla. But that this movie was purchased at Sundance, so was he attached Fucking before or swingers. after? Swingers. But was he attached before or after he got picked up at Sundance by the Weinsteins? Um, that is a great question that I will find out. Shortly. And even still, like Harmony is an unknown at this time. Larry's pretty much an unknown at this time. How do you? Oh man, how do you like do? How do you do that? That's so crazy. I have to believe it was guerrilla style. And then that the parents, when they found out, none of them could have been excited. Like, because even someone who's had time to, like, distance themselves from this movie and come back and watch it with fresh eyes and try and find a theme or, like, a moral backbone in this movie, there's not one. I see um, nothing I, positive about this I, movie. I, I, I just realized something. Hmm. Um... Th- this was released through the Weinsteins. Yep. 
Not only was it released in the, through the Weinstein's, oh, but God, that just took a darker turn. Yeah, it's I from from what I read, it was picked up by the Weinstein's. It was going to be released by Miramax, which at the time I believe was owned by Disney, um, but the MPAA wanted this to have an NC-17 rating and said that no matter what they cut, it was still going to receive that. And Disney forbids any of their movies to be released like that. So the wine scenes literally created a production company just for this movie to be uh, Amazing. distributed by. That's uh, Excalibur Films. Oh, I found something about Carrie. Mm-hmm. So it was Harmony Corinne who found his way to Carrie Woods, who, having recently produced another youth-marketed film, Rudy... Yeah, he produced Rudy. Was able to hook initial investors. No, that they, so in, he lied to those investors. He so initial investors. So that I mean that seems like it was before. Yeah, he to lied me. to investors. But like, dude, like he's got like he's got big shit to his name, dude. Like, yeah, the '98 Godzilla. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, fucking scream. Motherfucking Scream, dude. I love Scream. Yeah. Swingers. Uh, fucking things to do in Denver when you're dead. So I'm, so I married an axe murderer. <laughs> that movie fucking rules. Yeah. And also Rudy. <laughs> yeah, he he straight up lied to investors. He's like, hey, it's just group oh, about kids. Yeah. No, and... he didn't tell the truth about no, this movie at all. No, he was probably like, like there's it's, just no chance. I bet his pitch was like, it's a coming of age tale about teenagers living in New York, and that's all he told him. <laughs> there's no no sane person would put their money behind an unknown director and writer at the time with 1.5 million dollars, and no, no. <laughs> oh, um. <sighs> Let's talk about something Good I, times. something I did like about this movie. Um, probably the funniest moment for me, and it was just an extra. But it's early on in the film. It's when Casper and Telly are walking down the street and they're having their conversation about the Casper hooking up with the the I mean uh, Telly hooking up with the girl in the beginning, and they're walking towards this guy on the street who's just eating a sandwich and like looking around. And he's oh, I'm eating a sandwich. <laughs> he the guy on the sidewalk watches. Telly put two fingers up to Casper's nose and have him sm- has him smell his fingers, and he just walks across the street. <laughs> it's so I, I'm not doing it justice by describing it. But the guy like is eating a sandwich, sees the guys, and just like fuck this, and just walk like ugh, <laughs> just crosses the street. And that guy, I guarantee, was not an extra in the film. He was just some guy standing on the street when they were filming. <laughs> uh, gave me a I genuine. Laugh. Honestly. Would I don't doubt that at all. Gave honestly, me a, gave me a real genuine laugh. Um, speaking about that that opening scene, um, is the grossest one word in a movie that doesn't sound gross until you realize the context. I think the the award for that's got to go to the word butterscotch, right? That was the <laughs> grossest fucking thing I think I've ever heard. Um, and for those of you who don't remember who haven't watched the movie in a while, uh, that is how. Casper defines the scent of a virgin's vagina. <laughs> like butterscotch. Oh, oh, God. I just wanted to throw up in my mouth. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. You know? That's such a... I will say that is one of the things that seems very in line with what the the like characters of this movie is. Is that Harmony really tapped into the idea that teenagers are, are obsessed with virgin women. Like up, like they will not Are take. They? A, I remember distinctly in school, like people being like, "Dude, get yourself a virgin if you can the first time. It's the best thing ever." And I, I grew out of that super. No, quick. it isn't. It's not. It's horrible. No, it's <laughs> a fucking bummer. It's it's not. It's exhausting no. and just like, I'm not here to fucking teach. No, but you it, know, more so than that, like just the idea that like. Time consuming, and <laughs> I was gonna say just the idea that like it's stressful to yeah, be honest. Yeah. Like I'm sorry, Telly, you're gonna go gray so early. Yeah, just like just God, the idea God. that like are you, are you e- e- well, either actually his hair will fall out from the chemo. <laughs> Wait, nope, nope. I just got cancer and AIDS confused. Yeah, 
Um, <laughs> oh god. Damn. Um, just the idea that either a virgin boy or girl like would be exciting to have is it's not. It's such a misplaced idea of sexuality. It, like that's one thing I will say that this movie gets right because I do remember teenagers being. Like, I remember being like that as a teenager, thinking like that. Like the 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 idea of a virgin is like so special and like getting one and deflowering her is like the ultimate like triumph as a teenage horny boy and it's so dumb i fucking guess <laughs> it's man it's so dumb um yeah man like i said i w- i want something to latch onto this movie as someone who's not a teenager but i guess it's not for me it's not for anybody over the age of like 18 no man hard pass honestly yeah. um oh, and then there's just just these white kids throwing around the n word so much <laughs> that god okay I'm glad that bothered you too, because that really bothered it, me. It bothered me, and then when they get, they go to the park, and then they're singing in front of all their black friends. I'm like, I mean, I guess it, if they're cool with it, but still, like when you don't get that for the first like hour of the movie, you're like, God, yeah. damn it, these these kids are assholes. <laughs> Um, well, it's like when they're in the park and the first time he says it, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah. I was like, that guy's going like, to beat no the shit. No one else reacts. And I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Yeah. We're okay with this. God, man. The, the, the 90s were a terrible time to be alive. <laughs> I agree. I mean, I, you know, I, I was alive then. Yeah, but, I was too. Um, I, I realized th- the media of the 90s was great the actual living in it was awful because the fashion was fantastic i was gonna say the exact opposite (laughs) i was gonna say these clothes these kids are wearing are terrible (laughs) okay you know not all the fashion most of them casper's outfit is hilariously stupid (laughs) you obviously didn't watch a lot of seinfeld i did not (laughs) um they were crushing it but Fashion aside, there's the awful lingo. There's dude, the, the just the gay panic scene in the park is so <laughs> ridiculous, and God, it's so bad, <laughs> it's so dumb. And not only that, they had to pick the most like absurdly homosexual characters to play those parts. Like they're they couldn't pick just the like a norm, I don't want to say normal, but like you know, like a less loud. Like they had to pick the most obvious gay you're couple. Really wa- you're really walking. Well, you know what I mean. There, like, they, you know what I mean. They had to pick the most <laughs> obvious gay couple to really make that right. moment land. And it's like that was something we did then. Now it's much more subtle and like new. It's nuanced, and I was just like, God damn. You're, this movie. So you're much more subtle and nuanced when you're being a bigot. Yes. <laughs> um. God damn it. <laughs> What let's talk about the park scene. What what do you make of the the fight that Casper and the kids have with the guy that he bumped into? Is it uh, literally just there to have a violent scene? Because I know Harmony says that that actually happened, and they filmed that scene about ten yards away from where that ex- incident actually happened. That's fucking wild. I mean, that's I mean, it feels like a '90s thing to me, man. It's, but it's, it's city life, man. City life, just. That's what the streets are like, Dustin. I guess, man. I've, I've never been I to New York. I grew up on so. a farm. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in New um, York, so. I mean, you know, I'm not, I did grow up on a farm, but, you know, I lived in Chicago, a pretty large city. I've been in New York once. Um, I think it's a little bit exaggerated. Yeah. Um, but then again, I don't know. Like, New York in the 90s was, you know, that was, it was just coming back from what was considered it's really dark period, you yeah. know, like he hadn't quite recovered. So yeah. everyone was still kind of teetering that line, I guess it's simultaneously um, and feels... especially like asshole little skater kids like this, yeah. like that are drugged out and shit and drinking all the time. I completely believe they would like, you know, like he bumps into the dude and the dude, you know, maybe, maybe he overreacted a little bit, but you know, we don't know what that dude had gone through that day. Yeah. Maybe this is the fifth fucking little punk ass kid he's had to deal with. It it's and then they just beat the <laughs> fucking shit out of him. Yeah. It somehow Jesus. feels simultaneously authentic and exaggerated. Like I, yeah, I agree. And I I it's there 
I, I don't know why it's there in the script. I don't know if it's there to like really push home. Like if you didn't think these kids were dicks now, like look at this shit. Or if it's supposed to like further emphasize that these kids are out of control, that they have no guidance, no parents. There's not. A, I think there's one parent in this movie and that's Telly's mom that I can think of. Mm, yeah, like the whole time. Well, the whole time I was watching yeah. the movie, I was like, "Where are the parents?" <laughs> Not a single parent's home. She's and I got get a it. baby. Yeah, I get it that it's the '90s and like supervision wasn't like that high on the list of priorities for a lot of parents. But not a single parent other than Telly's mom. Like you don't see anybody. No police. Nothing. I don't know, man. Um, you do get a blunt rolling tutorial though. Yep. Thank yep. God. Um. What about uh, the taxi driver that Jenny rides home with? I thought was the rudest and weirdest taxi driver in a movie ever. <laughs> New York taxi drivers, man. He was so intrusive to that little girl who's just crying in the back seat. It was so weird. And he was talking about his first love and her. Didn't he say like she had big tits or something like that? <laughs> I was like, this is so God damn, This is so weird. <laughs> And rude. Uh, and I know he's there to be kind of like the, not necessarily guardian angel, but like the, the voice of like comfort in the movie. But he's so weird and creepy. <laughs> yeah, not for me. Not at all. Um, I don't have much else to talk let's, about, man. Oh, no. I want to. Let's just get to the end. Let's, man. let's go to the end. So do we want to recap what happens or? Okay, so this whole movie, Jenny has been trying to track down Telly. Mm-hmm. Right? To tell him that she has A's and she got it from him. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she eventually realizes she he's at a party. Mm-hmm. She gets to the party. Mm-hmm. While she's drugged out. Just a little too late. Yep. Because Telly is already... Going to town with, uh, what's her name? Uh, Darcy. Darcy, yeah, the younger girl. Who I think is 13. Yes. Yep. Um, and, like, you know, Jenny's all drugged up, fucking just emotional roller coaster of a day. She starts crying and shit. And she just kind of, like, I don't know, blacks out, passes out, would you say, I guess? Passes out? Or what's the equivalent of greening out, but for ecstasy? <laughs> Pinking I out? Know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, um, she passes out on the couch. And just to fucking top that off, yep. fucking Casper, who's all fucked up, yep. like uh, drugged out, drunk, whatever, just pretty much fucking rapes her. No, he full on rapes her. He, like, she's passed out and can't say no, and he rapes her. Yeah. Uh, and so now he's got the hiv. Yep. And. Then we get a fucking voiceover. Yeah. I, why are we in voiceover all of a sudden? I know, we don't get any voiceover Never had movie. voiceover this entire movie. Then all of a sudden at the end, it's like, let me tell and you it's, some stuff. Yeah, it's not. In a disembodied voice. It's a really bad read, too. Like, it, he's clearly yeah. reading off a script. Um, I did see something that said, like, this movie, originally the, um, the, the little 12 year old or 10 year old kid that's passed out on the couch next to Casper and Jenny like wakes up and watches them and that that was oh. that, that was cut and it deemed like too inappropriate but I was like this movie starts with a girl losing a virginity and that's ends. the thing that's the thing that's that's where they draw the yeah. line like no nah, he can't <laughs> watch it I, I've tr- we're cool <laughs> with the rape <laughs> yeah but he can't watch it. I'm trying to find some kind of narrative arc here, and, and I'm the only thing I can think of is that the movie starts with a girl losing her virginity and ends with a girl being raped. And I don't know what the message what is. What fucking yeah? I don't get it. Is there not what supposed is to be a message? Is is it just absurdism just for the sake of absurdism? Oh wait, I skipped over something at the very end. Yeah, Casper wakes up and goes, "What's going on?" He says, Jesus Christ, what happens? And I got to say, yeah, whatever. that is the only moment of the movie I like. Like, yeah, on this rewatch, that's, I think that's great. That works. Yeah. It's fucked up. Yeah. But it works. I like that it is at the end of the movie where you've realized all these horrible things have happened. He is now infected. And then him asking that to the audience, it's kind of like a call of action. 
like what happened? What is going? What what are we gonna? What's gonna become of us? What can we do to make sure this doesn't happen? Like it almost feels like it's just a PSA at that point. Like parents, right. call, find out where your kids are. <laughs> um, oh. But I I think that is a a fantastic way to like drive home how absurd and serious this movie is. Like how ridiculous this all is, and how it could be happening. And it's sad that it comes at the end and there's... God, I'm glad I don't fucking have kids. <laughs> Dustin, you're in for a fucking train wreck here in a few years, man. Yep. Out in your fucking free living, no care in the world, Los Angeles. Oh, yeah. Your kids are going to get into some shit. Oh, yeah. Um. But yeah, at the, at the beginning of the film, I, I found myself loathing every second of it. And then the literal last scene of... Casper's fourth wall break and like the shots of people in New York kind of like going about their day really contextualizes everything and it just like puts it on perspective and it's just like fuck man like is there any hope for the the, the generation that generation like millennials like the fucked up thing is he woke up and was like what happened yeah. and then probably just went and had a day very similar to this oh yeah no this was probably just fucking how they were living yep and that is God, I'd be dead after a day. Yeah, I like to think, like, my the optimistic side of me likes to think that this movie is kind of a PSA about, like, like an, almost a documentary. Like, this is what your kids are doing. This is what life is like for us without supervision, without proper health care, without, uh, you know, str- stricter policies on things. But, like, the pessimistic side of me is like, no, Harmony Korine just wanted to write a movie about what him and his friends do all day. <laughs> And yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I, t- I, I want to go with the optimistic version. <laughs> yeah, I would like to, but I don't I can't I can't. My 28 year old brain is telling me that's not what he was doing. And I can't latch on to anything at this age to this movie anymore. I I don't think I'll ever have a need to rewatch this movie. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't have a fucking need until you were like, <laughs> hey, dude, we're doing kids. Yep. Fuck. Oh, oh God. Uh, let me reword it. Hey, dude, we're going to cover the film <laughs> Kids. That's m- much better. Way to go, Mally. Pat myself on the back. Um, that was close. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, I, th- All right. I think that's it for me, man. I don't think I have anything you, else. It's going to be, it's real slim pickings, Dustin. Not going to lie. Can I, can I tell you something? Oh, God, what? I completely forgot to even come up with a silver lining until just now because I completely forgot that was the entire point of the show. I have one, and it, it, it could be considered controversial. Okay. Um, My silver lining for the 1995 film, Kids, mm-hmm. Telly and Casper both got AIDS. They got what they deserved. They fucking, oh my god, they deserve it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I hope, maybe this is an alternate universe, and they fucking cured AIDS, and Jenny got it, and that's awesome, but fucking Casper and Telly, nope, no cure for them. Yeah. AIDS for life. Yep. Um, Fuck those kids. All right, well, I gotta think of one now. That's um, mine. That's mine. That is probably the best the best thing you could think of for this movie. Ooh. Other silver lining. Okay. Maybe the dude. Maybe the dude in the park lived. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know if don't that's know. a silver lining as much as just like a. Would you rather they fucking <laughs> killed a guy? No, but. <laughs> okay. Fuck you. It counts. At least I had something. Mister, still don't have one. You're right. Um. God. Dead air, Dustin. Mm, Audio I will, podcast. I, I don't have a silver lining, but I'll. Uh, what a hopeful thought. It's, it, it's in the title of the show. I'm going to think Jesus of one before the end of the episode. Don't worry. But I will say a hopeful thought. Liar. A hopeful thought that you can maybe latch on to is that, like, it's not a one-to-one necessarily. Like, sleeping with someone who has HIV does not guarantee you will get it. It's just you're more, you're very likely to. So there is a possibility that all the girls that uh, Telly has hooked up with since the, his problem, which I don't understand then. I'm confused. If Telly's whole thing is that he l- only wants virgins, how did this happen? Yes. Well, I, it's not. I, I think it's implied to me that seemed like a relatively newer ordeal. Mm-hmm. Like he just decided, he's like, you know what? I'm only going after virgins now. Could it be like th- it's a it's a phase? Maybe it's a phase. You know? Yeah. 
Yeah. Like we all, you know, we all go through phases like, you know, some, you know, right. I ate a turkey sandwich tonight. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm at the store, I'm like, ooh, you know what? Salami does sound good. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, you know, chomp on some salami for a week. Maybe I'll go honey ham. I don't know. Can In his case. His turkey sandwich was virgins. You tell me this. Does if this doesn't work for a silver lining, I, I get it. Um Mine was that they got AIDS. <laughs> I think whatever you come up with is gonna be fine, we, man. I like to re- to recontextualize your silver lining as that the antagonist got what they deserved. Rather than Okay, well no, that's just what mine was. No, no, I'm that's saying the same I, no, thing. No, that's what I'm saying. Yours is like yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather yeah, than just saying, oh, two teenage boys got AIDS. Like, it sounds horrible on the surface, but when you... They're the antagonists okay, well, of the movie. All right. They well, get what they deserve. Okay. Reword it for your fancy <laughs> Los Angeles speak. So you you tell me if this... Not in Atlanta. We speak fucking real. They got AIDS, <laughs> son. You tell me if this doesn't work, but... Jenny does not... Like, at the beginning of the movie, she likes to... She still kind of had to think for Telly. Then she finds out her diagnosis, and she, like just completely does not like like it just disavows him completely um and well disavows him but also searches for him the entire film to confront him yeah um yes. but she also does like despises casper and true while he does take advantage of her and ultimately you know it just is completely horrific what happens to her does it, would you would you count this as a second silver lining that she, in a weird sort of way, because Casper and Telly are best friends, kind of gets Casper gets his Telly gets his comeuppance because his best friend Casper has now been essentially like Telly is responsible for giving Casper AIDS. Oh shit! Like, would you count that as two silver linings or as one count. together? Ah, one and a half. It's almost like Jenny got revenge immediately <laughs> yeah fuck it let's go with that boom okay. silver linings okay. done so we call Nailed it silver it, linings we're not gold ki- <laughs> we're killing this episode <laughs> so it's like recap, AIDS is gonna kill these kids to recap our silver linings Woo, is that the bad that got guys dark. got AIDS <laughs> yeah fuck oh man oh man that was we're gonna get in a lot of trouble for this episode I think <laughs> I don't I don't this know is, I mean, is there? I said, I said, hey, it's a lot. Is there anything else to pull from this movie? Like, that's good. I'm trying to think of any moment that could have been considered good. Uh, um, hmm, uh, it's rough, man. I don't know. Uh, um, yeah, I think I think we're done. <laughs> I, I got nothing. So we're, we're bronze linings this week. Bronze linings. <laughs> God, rust covered. Um, I shit. I have nothing um, else to say about this movie ever again. All right, what are we watching afterwards? What's bringing us back, Dustin? What you got? Well, pick me up, film, go. Movie about kids hanging out and just getting into shit that's fun. Why not do a movie that's like the grown up version of that? Like drinking, hanging out, having dumb conversations. Why not just go to Clerks right after this? Ooh. And then if you really want to push it further, you nice. can go into Clerks 2 and get your Rosario Dawson fix in line oh, with that. Oh, God. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, You know, I want to, you know, I really want to go stick with Harmony Corinne and go Spring Breakers. Yeah. Um, I don't know with how just deep down the rabbit hole kids takes you. I don't know if Spring Breakers is going to bring you all back up. Spring Breakers spoiler is at least alert fun to watch. Spoiler alert, the best part of that movie is Franco and he does die in it. Yeah. Um spoilers there. Yeah. So, I'm going to go with just the most polar opposite fucking movie I can think of. Okay. After I watch Kids, motherfucker, I am watching Toy Story. <laughs> okay. That that I feel you. There on that. is no thin little string of connectivity. <laughs> connectivity, except that fucking God, just man, Pixar gets me going. Kids, kids play with toys. That's your connected connective tissue. Right Not there. these fucking kids. 
No. There they is that play with girl. each other. There's that little girl that's beside the stoop that has her doll, her black Lucy. Boom. Connected. There you go. Toy Story. <laughs> Don't. Not. Not. Toy Story 2. Toy Story 2 is okay. Yeah, but it. Oh, man. It makes me sad. Toy Story 3 is just some depressing shit. Oh, uh, but man. But yeah, Toy Story 1, man. Like, go to, just go to town. You gotta need to. Like, watch it twice. Mel, yeah, I feel like I need a shower after this movie. I literally just took one. Yeah, after this episode, I'm going to go take one. Um, yeah, I might, I might brush my teeth. If you um, enjoyed, or at least uh, not necessarily enjoy the movie, but enjoy this episode we did on uh, 1995's Kids, you might like some of the other movies in our back catalog that you can find right now wherever you found this episode. We're on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. Uh, we also are, all, also are on social media like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you search for the yeah, Silver man. Linings playlist, you'll probably find us. Um, if you really want to get into a deep probably. dive with us and the movies we've covered, including kids, you can go to our subreddit right now at reddit.com slash r slash Silver Linings playlist. There you'll find official discussion threads where you can discuss every movie we've talked about uh so far with us, with uh, your peers, anything you want to do, you can do it there. You can give us feedback on how we're doing, things you like, things you don't like, um, movies you think we could cover on the show that qualify. Um, if you want to be a guest on the show, anything you want to do in relation to the show, you can do it there. You can also do it on our social media if you really want to. Um, but yeah, that's uh, reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Now, we are completely done with kids, but... We continue on Ooh. with season three next week. Mally, what are we talking about next week? My I got a little hint for next week, although my hint is actually more of a fun fact. Okay. Um, Billy Zane is not the dude from The Mummy. <laughs> that's that's the clue for next week. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll find out what that means next week. Um, Mally, is there anything else you want to talk about before we sign off for the week? God, no. All right. I'll, think about it this way. You never have to watch this movie again. Thank God. Oh, thank you. Well, let me put it this way. Uh, do we recommend this movie now? I mean, if someone hasn't seen it before and doesn't know about it, I definitely want to watch them watch it. Yeah. So for, for a first time view. It's not going to be. I will. I won't watch the movie. I will watch someone watch this for the first time. Okay. Um, I, would, I will mentally check out of the film yeah. and just laugh at their despair. <laughs> um, I, but if someone, like, if me and another person, like if me and one of my buddies who I know has seen are hanging out, like, hey man, you want to watch kids? No, not not gonna fucking happen. Yeah, I would say there's two circumstances where I would recommend this movie, and one is what Mally said: if you've never seen it before, definitely check it out just to experience it. Um. And the second one would be if you if you were under the age of let's say eighteen, or lost a bet. <laughs> yeah, uh, I do feel like this isn't like this isn't one of the, like you know you see a movie you haven't seen in a long time you're browsing Netflix Hulu whatever you know you're scrolling through you're like oh shit that movie mm-hmm. this isn't one of those movies this is like oh fuck how do I scroll faster <laughs> I I mean get it out is it an important movie would you say it's an important movie. I feel like it is on uh, on the plateau. Maybe then. Yeah. Like when this movie came out, I could see how it was kind of, you know, very different, very fucking in your face. Yeah. Very punk. Now, I don't think so. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's all I got for, for this week. Um, uh, if you got nothing else, Molly, we can sign off here. Um what do you what do you think? Are you done for this week? Yeah, no, I'm complete. I'm emotionally drained. All right, well, we will see you next week to talk about Billy Zane. Apparently, <laughs> so they'll hear us next. Yes, what? yes, you hear will hear us. Oh man, sorry. Whew. Until then, as always, Excelsior! 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 Look at us!